so this modes of transfer is what are the different ways that memory and io that is input output device can transfer can can transfer data by different means what are the different means earlier we have seen that is something uh this one this for hand shaking this must go and this uh, synchronous data transfer so this is a synchronous data transfer uh here this is transfer has come this terminology transfer in a synchronous data transfer and here uh, this is uh, more of transfer more of transfer so some curious guys may have some some confusion are bhai there also transfer has come here also transfer has come then uh, what is the difference then so difference is this carefully you uh, try to uh, understand this what are the difference ways that memory that is your ram or any uh, memory which, which is there inside the computer your memory that may be a ram that may be your hard disk uh, contains memory that is there inside your computer memory and your input output device io device so how these two devices can transfer data between each uh, be, between them among them So this needs to be transferred here, or this needs to be transferred here. So how is that they carry out data transfer? That is what the modes of transfer uh, here we mean. This transfer. If you go here, this uh, asynchronous data transfer. This again transfer has come here. This transfer is how devices know meaningful data, meaning uh, this uh, you know. Uh, here you are transmitting this data over the bus. So how is that this destination no knows that this this data is meaningful, valid? So that is in that in that perspective we are saying data transfer here. So a meaningful data being received by a, a destination unit or source unit is through uh, this transfer. This is how devices know. meaningful data really took place transferring of meaningful data really took place between the devices so that is this asynchronous uh, data transfer this this transfer refers to this one this meaningful data transfer so we use this transfer again here in the modes of transfer this is not about the meaningful data this is how actually your memory is able to transfer data to the io device or io device able to transfer data to the memory so this point uh, if you understand those who are really uh, seriously uh, studying seriously and uh, uh, focusing every uh, word of the uh, this subject then they may uh, avoid this confusion this modes of transfer so in this modes of transfer one is programmed io method is there the other is interrupt initiated io the other is direct memory access these are the three means three methods three approaches that we can tra uh, transfer data between memory to io or io to memory. so let us see one by one uh, uh, you know this three methods for that bit again the uh, orally what have communicated again this point wise let us see binary information received from an external device is usually stored in memory for later processing this example i uh, told earlier in uh, earlier presentation taking a some text file uh, writing in that something and store saving it so that is uh, i told at that point of time that this is being stored in my uh auxiliary memory that is uh, my hard disk so so that later on i can access it and i can process it so information transferred from the central computer into an external device originates in the memory unit so meaning of this is that file what i have stored if i want to transfer that file to the external device pen drive 
So this communication is actually taking place through this memory unit. Through this memory unit it is taking place. Information transfer from central computer, that is your CPU to your external device. This external device may be your uh, pen drive or your printer or whatever. But I just took an example that file transferring uh, last session what I gave the example uh, to the pen drive. So the CPU merely executes IO instructions and may accept data temporarily, but the ultimate source or destination is the memory unit. CPU in order to carry out this process, that is to transfer information from the computer to the external device, it has to execute your instructions. Once this instruction execution is done, the CPU is not going to play any role. So what is happening is the communication is actually taking place between source and destination. The CPU is really not going to play any role. It is simply executing your IO instructions or so. So data transfer between the central computer and IO devices may be handled in a variety of modes. Since the CPU is simply uh, executing this IO, and uh, some other unit is actually handling uh, uh, this uh, data transfer. This data uh, transfer between the central computer, that is your CPU and IO devices, may be handled in variety of modes. Some modes use the CPU as an intermediate part. Among these modes we are talking about, to transfer this data, there are several ways here, variety of modes. These are the variety of modes. These variety of modes are here, this programmed I.O., interrupt initiated I.O., direct memory, and there is one more called I.O.P. Uh, that is input output processor. So these are the variety of modes. This variety of modes, in that variety of modes, this variety of modes, some modes use the CPU as intermediate for. Through the CPU they go all the time. Others transfer the data directly to and from the memory. So. Without the role of CPU, also transferring of data is taking place. So that is handled by these two, interrupt initiated or this direct memory access, without the role of the CPU. So data transfer to and from the peripherals may be handled in one of the three possible parts. So let us see uh, each one. At any point of time, you please feel free to stop me. Uh, guys, there. Uh, uh, I think I'm audible uh, to you people. At any point of time, you please stop me, unmute yourself, and uh, ask the questions. So this is uh, data transfer from I/O device to CPU. We have the CPU and we have the I/O device, and there is an interface. This we have seen already uh, some some uh, sessions uh, in the past. We have seen somewhere here this I/O device. Uh, sorry, interface device. This interface is uh, here. This interface. This is the processor. And this is the interface. At this point, uh, we talked a lot that uh, there are several I/O devices. Each I/O device has got its own, uh, you know, interface unit. So this interface unit. At, th at this point, we also talked about that this is having inside this circuit with this interface uh, unit. So the same thing is here again uh, in this uh, modes of transfer. So this CPU, their processor earlier, uh, the backlights processor, and this is the IO device. So the communication is through this interface. As said in my previous slides, previous sessions, that uh, this interface also has got inside some circuitry. As part of the circuitry, few things are listed here, that is the data register and status register and the flag uh, uh, single bit, uh, I mean, single uh, flip flop, flag uh, one bit register. So apart from this, you have some signals that are coming from the IO device, requesting to the interface, saying that this data is valid, this IO signal is uh, conveying to this interface through this signal. When this signal comes, the hardware is so designed in the interface that when this data valid is uh, high, 
then it assumes uh, the hardware is so designed that when this is high, whatever the I/O bus contains are there, that needs to be taken into the data register. And also, it has to set this flag register, single bit register, and some status registers. About this single status register and flag register, long ago we have uh, seen. Uh, I mean, uh, in the past, uh, uh, that I/O communication earlier slides. Uh, to, uh, just a while ago, I referred them. So there, uh, we have been said that the status checking, like a paper is speeded or not, ink is there or not. So such 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 information is there in the status register. So and then once this is ready, this interface unit is ready, having taken I/O uh, uh, from the I mean input from the this uh, this I/O device wants to send something, and it has taken into the data register. It is keeping ready because it has to synchronize also. The role of interface is many. We have seen it also has to synchronize the speed between IO device and the CPU. CPU is working at higher speeds and it's working at lower speeds. So, so for that reason, it has to save the data because directly it cannot transfer because they are operating at lower speeds. And then this CPU, it what it does is it reads the status here and the flag register. If everything is fine, then it takes a data from this data register, it reads that data. So this one we will see here. This data transfer from I/O device to CPU. An example of data transfer from an I/O device to an interface into the CPU is shown in figure. This one we are talking about. This data transfer from I/O device to CPU. The device transfers bytes of data one at a time as they are available. So, one at a time, byte, byte means eight bits, eight bits being transferred one at a time. So, the device transfers bytes of data one at a time as they are available. When byte of data is available, the device places it in the I/O bus and enables its a data valid line. When this byte is ready with this input device, it enables this data valid. It puts, it puts the data contents into the I.O. bus and it enables this data value. So the interface accepts the byte into its data register and enables the data accepted line. Once this, this uh, data been accepted by this interface module, then this interface enables this data accepted line. The interface accepts the byte into its data register and enables the data accepted line. The interface sets a bit in the status register that we will refer to as an F. That is flag. This is status we are setting here. So the interface sets a bit in the status register that we will refer to as an F or flag bit. The device can now disable the data valid line. This device, this I/O device, can disable this data valid line because it has been received by the interface. Interface has received the eight bits. After receiving the 8 bits, as long as this data is valid, it is receiving the 8 bits and keeping in the data register. Having received the 8 bits, then it is setting the status register bit here. So having set this one, the device can now disable the data valid line. But it will not transfer another byte until the data accepted line is disabled by the interface. This is important. This is the important thing. But it will not transfer. This how long it is not going to transfer after disabling this one here. Data validated line is disabled when this data accepted line has enabled by the interface. This data accepted line is enabled when this uh, this this flag bit is set. When this flag bit is set, when this is received by this interface, all eight bits. Once all eight bits been received by the interface module. This interface module is enabling setting the flag register, and also because of flag flag uh, register being set, 
then data acceptor line is enabled. Since data acceptor line is enabled, this data valid line is disabled. As long as this data accepted line is enabled, it, this I/O device is not going to send any new data to the interface module. A program is written for a, for the computer to check the flag in the status register to determine if a byte has been placed in the data register by the I/O device. Now, what is that? Uh, this one doing this CPU. CPU is actually going and checking uh, in order to check this bit whether bit is enabled or not. The CPU is executing a program. The program is written for the computer to check the flag in the status register to determine if a byte has been placed in the data register by the I/O device. This is done by reading the status register into the CPU register and checking the value of the flag. So hope this is clear here. It is executing a program. This program job is to check the status bit, status register, that is F, F, that is flag bit. If this is set, then it means this interface is ready with the data. If the flag is equal to one, the CPU reads the data from the data register. The flag bit is then clear to zero by either the CPU or the interface, depending on how the interface circuits are designed. So here, if the flag is equal to suppose a zero, and it is cleared if it is set to one. That's why also we can design. This is a hardware design. So that's why it is said here, depending on how the interface circuits are designed. But in this example, if the flag is equal to one, the CPU reads the data from the data register. Got it? The flag bit is then cleared once this is read by the CPU. This flag. So after that, the flag bit is cleared to zero. Either by CPU or by this interface module itself. Depends on how interface circuit is designed. Once the flag is clear, once the flag is clear, the interface disables the data accepted line. Here, once the flag is cleared, this is been set to one. When data valid has come, all the eight bits been taken. When all eight bits the 8 bits been read by the interface. This is set to 1. And CPU executes a program to see this is set or not. If it is set, then it reads the data from the data register. And then this flag is set to 0 again. This setting to 0 again is by either by uh, CPU or by the interface. How actually these hardware are designed. Depending on that, it may set to zero, or this program itself may set to zero after reading data register. Once this is set to zero, then only this data accepted line is disabled. Until that time, till that time, so this data accepted is enabled high. As long as this data accepted line is enabled high, a new data this I/O device is not going to put here, or not going to send to the interface. Is that clear? Yes, someone can uh, unmute yourself and talk to me because long time if you keep uh, uh, this way, keep listening and uh, hardly you will grab anything. You keep in, uh, interacting. Sir, we need to transfer data from memory to I.O. but we are dealing with CPU sir, here. We are, uh, this example is data transfer from I.O. device to C. I/O device to CPU means CPU memory. This data transfer is I/O device to memory. So these address buses are there. These address buses are there to read this. This this has got some address. This data will go into the CPU where where it will sit. This data that has that had gone to the CPU where it will sit. Inside the CPU, there is a, again memory blocks here not shown. 
the memory blocks will be there. This data will go either to the memory block so that CPU can later on it process it or directly if it is currently processing, this data directly can go to the processing elements such as arithmetic units, logical units, like a CPU, the job of CPU is to compute. In case if there is no computation required, only if you want to read the file from the I/O device. You this is suppose say you are you are you are pen drive suppose. I/O device is a pen drive. Now you plug it in your uh, pen drive to uh, this uh, CPU. This plugging in is not going to happen directly like this. Plugging in is going to happen through an interface. Now the user is operating the CPU. Since user operating the CPU, he or she will try to open the file. So during this opening the file action, there is a program back back end that is a program USB program that is that is running. This program job job is to execute few instructions so that these few instructions will go and they will check this uh, flag bits. Meanwhile, this interface module is so designed to handle the USB any device. Here, for in this case, our USB device is a pen drive. This is designed. This hardware is so designed. The moment you plug in this data, this this will transfer the data, and if that data will sit in the data register, and it will uh, if it's not transferred, then at least if the moment you plug in this flag is set to one, saying that this device is ready. When user clicking here some uh, uh, file to access it, it means what he or she is actually executing the instructions. The instructions in a uh, no time fraction of seconds they go, they check this one, and this interface module acknowledges this to the pen drive I/O device, and this I/O device keep transferring data. Everything uh, will uh, going to happen. So that way, this example is. Data transfer from I/O device to CPU. 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 As I said, it, it will take this data to open. To open means it is not uh, computing anything. It is just displaying for you. From where it will display if that data is available inside the CPU memory. We mean CPU means in, to the memory unit here. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. Are there any uh, doubts? Others also can speak. Uh, see, I am going so slowly. Rushing is again confuses. Um, uh, if if you if you uh, acknowledge your problems, then I can smoothly run. If you keep quiet, then uh, um, there is no way that I can understand your problem. Kindly speak because I cannot go to the chat uh, window because I have to come out of the presentation. And then see the chat window. So instead, you please uh, one after another unmute yourself and talk to me. Yes. Yes, sir. Everything is clear. Sir. Okay, that is one one candidate. Thank you. Thank you for responding. Are there any other who is finding difficulty to understand this concept in understanding this concept? Are there any? Please, uh, those who are finding difficulty. I beg you, you please unmute yourself. Help me so that I can clear the doubts. Are there any? Uh, I will count down five, four, three, two, one. Oh, oh. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes, that's great. <coughs> sir, that status register. Can you explain once? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I will explain. This is one doubt. Okay, let us see. Let us pick a few more doubts so that uh, once, uh, once for all, we can pick and uh, we can answer. Uh, any other? Any other? The one, 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 uh, one of our friend asking status register uh, uh, explanation. Are there any others? So very, 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 very quickly, please help us so that we can save the time. Uh, I count down again. Five, four, three. Two, one, uh, zero. Uh, okay, I think only one candidate have in this town. No problem. I said many a times I encourage if you ask doubt, proof is not going to collapse underneath. Nothing is going to take an away. So remember these two. 
fundamental principles. If we are not asking, we are actually spoiling our answers. We have to ask doubts. That may be silliest doubt, no issue about that. So, no problem. Okay, let us very quickly come to this uh, discussion again. There is no complexity. Make the things very easy. Those easy things are like this simple. That this, there is a CPU and there is an I.O. device. Every I.O. device actually will communicate to the CPU through interface only. So this is point number one. Point number two is, how is that this CPU is going to know that this I.O. device has sent the data? That is the point number two. Because this CPU is operating at higher speeds and this I.O. device is operating at lower speeds. There is mismatch. Suppose say if I am communicating, I am a CPU and you are I.O. device. Blah, 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 something I said. That blah, 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 everything is meaningful to me because such a speed I am talking. But you as I.O. device, you cannot able to grab what I am really uh, meaning there. So for you, there should be a, some interface. What it does is, it takes my blah, 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 and it, it does oh, the understand like that. Meanwhile, this blah, blah, blah needs to be captured somewhere. That capturing somewhere happening in the data register. Blah, 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 everything is captured in the data register. And this I.O. device, this interface device, slowly understanding this speed and giving data to the team. So by, till that time, this I.O. device is keeping calm because it cannot send any more data. Because already this data register is filled. How is that happening that it is knowing that I shouldn't send the data? And uh, how is that CPU understanding that data, uh, meaningful data is available in the data register? This is through status register. This is happening through status register. Status register is uh, a set of flip flops here. Set of flip flops. One minute, I'll go to this uh, our old friend paint. Our old friend and our paint. For world friend paint now ready. So here I have some. Uh, I have to pick uh, some. Uh, this is a status register I'm talking about. Uh, like that, like that. Uh, see, this is for. Uh, I'll write down. This is for ink printer. We, we are talking about the uh, printer. For ink status is this this flip flop, and this flip flop is for uh, paper. Paper is there or not in the tray? That is, and this is for. Uh, is there anything to print actually? Is there, uh, is there, anything uh, to print? Anything to print? So like that, suppose we'll take, talk about this three, uh, three, three, because we are uh, just leaving them here. And uh, now this uh, this is a complete uh, say uh, this entire thing is our printer, big box, a big uh, hardware box printer. So here I have my that ink uh, holder, cartridge or what you call that thing, uh, that uh, holder. This holder actually is uh, connected with uh, some sensors here. Some sensors. This sensor is actually able to uh, uh, sense uh, like uh, the level of ink here. So, so say uh, we say here this is uh, uh, top here. Brim brim is this top here is this, and uh, down starts like this ink ink level. So these sensors uh, are actually trying sensing here everywhere the sensors are connected here so what is the level to indicate the electronic devices these are sensors you know light sensors uh, speed sensors like that this is a uh, some moisture sensor let us say this is a moisture kind of thing uh, in fields or a liquid uh, kind of thing wet wet kind of thing so for that uh, there is a special sensor now this uh, sensor value here uh, depending upon the level here, this is the one level, this is the another level, this is the another level, this is the another level. The, let us say this is the last level. Uh, there is uh, no ink here. In this uh, place, there is no ink at all. In this place, there is no ink. So, sensor actually also connected uh, here also. Uh, here also, sensor being connected. 
so if this is the uh, every everything uh, this every level this every level is actually going through some suppose say or gate just for uh, understanding this everything and this is given to the flip flop here this is the one flip flop because say, after all this is the status register status register means uh, register means a group of flip flops so this is every 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 one uh, here is a, this is one flip flop one this is our flip flop two, like that. A group of flip flops are nothing but our status register. And uh, everything here, this is given to R gate, and this is also given to R gate. This is also given to R gate. This is also something like that. So since here every everywhere there is uh, no ink, uh, so let us say if uh, no ink, then output is zero. It is giving. It's giving zero. Since here also knowing, this wire also will give a zero uh, output. O uh, overall, we are getting a zero here. So meaning this flip flop is actually with a zero. Now you are having here your CPU. Your CPU is there here. This is your printer hardware. Now CPU is having uh, some program, uh, set of instructions here. While you before print anything, uh, before give any any command to print here to the printer here, some programs are executed. This uh, some uh, one two three uh, together are one uh, program. Let us say statement one, statement two, statement three. One program. Let us say they check the status of the uh, printer. So this printer uh, when program is executed, it will go first. It will check first ink is there or not. But very unfortunately, here it is set to zero. So what is that reply? It is going from the printer to the uh, output. When you program, you execute a, C, a simple C program. If you write uh, multi uh, multiply, uh, then what? Uh, if you execute that C program, it will it will prompt you enter two numbers so that I can multiply. So you are entering two. Enter pressing your keyboard on keyboard. You are pressing enter. Then the other next line three. So now you are pressing enter. So congratulations, your product is six. Like that, you can write a C program, no? So like that, you wrote a program. The program job is to access this 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 flip flop and to see if this is set and I'll give you output like that. The C C output has come like that to give you output. What is that output? This output is to sense this particular flip flop only. And to give a feedback that this is set to zero. If this is set to zero, there is another program executed. If it is set to zero and display on the uh, monitor that there is no ink in the uh, printer, like that. Is that clear now? Guys, you have to respond. What is the status register? Is that clear? Are somebody asked? Yes, sir, it is clear. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about others? Others? Uh, can someone? Uh, hello. Can someone speak? Is that clear? Clear, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So let us back to our discussion here. Uh, this one we are here. This one, uh, I'm just picking my pointer. So this status uh, register is working like that. The way just in a paint friend I uh, demonstrated. Some programs are coming here. These I/O read programs. They come here. They check this status uh, register. If it is set, if it is set. For example, in this status register, there are many actually. Not only this flag. We are actually in this example. We are simply discussing about the flag only. But in a reality, this status register will have several. The way in a uh, paint friend, uh, just now I said uh, one is for ink, one is for paper, one is for the uh, tray. I mean that the top or top of the printer is closed or not. So several such status register. This is having several uh, flip flops. Among the several flip flops, there is a one flip flop we are talking about in this example, so that we can understand what is. Uh, uh, how the data transfer is happening? Programmed I/O. This is called programmed I/O transfer. So this is uh, how it is happening. That it 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 senses this uh, flag. If the flag is one, CPU reads the data. 
CPU got the information that yes, it is ready now. Uh, the meaningful data is available in the data register. When CPU is knowing, you data flag this uh, flag uh, flag is set to one. So then the CPU reads that data from the data register. So once the flag is clear, the interface disables the data accepted line, and the device can then transfer the next byte data. So that is what uh, happening in this uh, uh, so far this uh, we continued our uh, this one data transfer from io device to cpu how really happening that one we focused so far how really happening so now this data transfer may happen from uh, cpu to io also but in this example we took io to cpu io to cpu likewise cpu to io also may happen but this is happening how meaning one one way is to make it possible through program like so these are the three methods i was telling you what what are the different ways that memory and io can transfer data so uh, somebody asked uh, you are talking about the cpu but where is the memory so for that also i gave given the clarification that saying this cpu though cpu are telling where that data will sit data should sit somewhere Somewhere means that somewhere nothing but memory. Though we have shown CPU, why we have shown CPU? CPU executes two instructions. That the execution of two instructions is essential. For that reason, we have uh, shown here because uh, here somewhere we said uh, it means, uh, CPU merely executes the I/O instructions and may accept data temporarily, but ultimate source and destination is the memory unit. This is the main point. The guy who asked the uh, where is the memory uh, should focus uh, this point i took up actually this point before going to this 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 point has come even before we we had gone to here so this one so cpu it comes into the picture just because of the reason this that it has to in, in execute the instruction but ultimately that uh, that the data uh, will go into the memory or it will go from the memory to the io so that way but it also can come to the temporarily as i said uh, instantly this data uh, data may go to the memory or it may come to the computation if instantly if it is computing multiplying then data may not go to the memory it may uh, come to the cpu directly for computational element so anyway hope the guy the one who earlier asked uh, he got the point if not then most welcome most welcome any time you can ask if, if this is not clear let us come to this one uh, the to the other guys status register status register is not only having this flag which is having uh, several other uh, flip flops but we are taking only this for understanding purpose exam so that should be clear so now coming to this one all this is about about from here to this slide one this that is 40 number 47 number is 47 47 slide and this 48 and this 49 all three are speaking how actually data transfer uh, is taking place between io to cpu this is under modes of transfer tomorrow in external exam if, if it is coming uh, write a brief notes on modes of transfer so you have to write slide this this contains slide number one this is let us say one this two three four and this uh, four that's it these four slides contains fewer points are there slide slide wise you four uh, four but if you point wise if you see in a, in a half page you can accommodate all that, all these points so hope this is very clear examination point of view i'm telling you once again this is important it will come right about modes of transfer so in that case five for five marks it will come this theory will come for five marks this theory okay now this is another part of the question that what are the methods what are the various methods to transfer what are the various modes of transfer so in that case about this you have to elaborate programmed io interrupt initiated io and then direct uh, uh, direct memory access that is as a another question the, of the same topic so again this is for seven marks this theory is for five marks this is for seven marks so now coming to the seven months. Here are the seven months. So 
programmed I/O operations are the result of I/O instructions written in the computer program. So, programmed I/O operations are the result of I/O instructions. Just now we said here the CPU merely executes. CPU merely executes I/O instructions. So, if CPU is executing I/O instruction, that is a, that is a, this type. The programmed I/O we can call. That is a programmed I/O. So, programmed I/O operations are the result of I/O instructions written in the computer program. Each data item transfer is initiated by an instruction in the program. This each data item, this data item, you should not be forgetting. This data item is there in here. Here, this data item is transferred. Each data item is transferred. How it is transferred? Each data item. This is how it is transferred. Is initiated by an instruction in the program. For every every byte, this I/O instruction needs to be executed. Why? Why? Because we had to ensure that that byte has come and sitting in the this data register. For every byte, this this CPU has to execute instruction so that this flag can be tested that this is set to one. Then only this data register contents can be taken by the CPU. For that reason, for every byte transfer, this has to execute an instruction. So that is what this meaning is. Any any doubts about this this these two points? Any doubts? Are there any doubts? Guys, please respond. Okay, no doubts, I guess. So the transfer is to and from a CPU register. And peripheral. This is again very obvious. It may be from CPU to peripheral, peripheral to CPU. Other instructions are needed to transfer data to and from CPU. This is important. The, this part is important. Other instructions are needed to transfer data to and from CPU and memory. These instructions are needed to check the flag status register whether the flag is set to one or not. Other than these instructions, some other instructions are also required so that this data transfer can be done from the that I/O that interface module to the CPU or uh, you know CPU to the I/O devices through that uh, interface module. So other instructions are needed to transfer the data to to and from CPU and memory. Transferring data under program control requires. Constant monitoring of the peripheral by the CPU. So this is again the same. Once a data transfer is initiated, the CPU is required to monitor the interface to see when a transfer can again be made. It is very obvious. So as long as this data transfer is taking place here, this all the time it should go there and check this one, and if it is set to one, transfer this one. So likewise, this will go on. How long this will go on in subsequent slide, uh, slides? We'll see now. So short, we'll see. So that is uh, once data transfer is initiated, the CPU is required to monitor the interface to see when the transfer again uh, transfer uh, can again be made. It is up to the programmed instructions executed in the CPU to keep close tabs on everything that is taking place in the interface unit and I/O device. So, who is taking care actually? This program is so who is writing this program instructions? You, you as a programmer, to take ensure that how long this CPU should check those flags. It is cannot keep checking that for a while. Suppose say for uh, one minute, this checking flag is set or not. So more than one minute, you don't want to check. So one minute, you keep checking that flag. So after uh, one minute, the time elapsed, then it will do some other job. Again, after a while, again it comes and again it checks whether the flag is set to one. Because if there if there is any peripheral being set, so that is the headache with this uh, program. I will you will see shortly. This is inefficient. You see here inefficient. This way of uh, uh, you know uh, accessing I/O devices uh, contents to the memory and giving memory contents to the I/O devices is inefficient. This 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 mode is called programmed I/O mode. This programmed I/O mode is inefficient. Why? Uh, very 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 quickly we'll wrap that. Uh, session also. See. So now the programmed I/O method is particularly useful in small, low-speed computers or in systems that are dedicated to monitor a device continuously. 
this is very obvious. The difference in information transfer rate between CPU and IO device makes this type of transfer is in inefficient. Why this is inefficient is the answer here. Consider a typical computer that can execute two instructions that read the status register and check the flag in one microsecond. So I was talking about, about all the uh, you know, so far discussion. This will check here. So to check this one, it is taking one microsecond. For example, let us say that it's taking one microsecond to check that status register. I assume that the input device transfers its data at an average rate of 100 bytes per second. 100 bytes per second. This is equivalent to one byte every 10,000 microseconds. This one should be clear. Someone can take pen and paper, can ensure that this is uh, correct. Uh, this is what? 100 bytes per second. If you are transmitting 100 bytes per second, then one byte to transmit one byte, what is the time taken? Means 10,000 microseconds. Is that clear? This point is that clear to everyone there present? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, others, anyone having problem, they can they can uh, unmute and can ask how it is that you explain. I am not understanding. Like that, you please unmute and ask. Uh, I think uh, it is to, uh, clear to everyone. That's why no one is. Uh, I, I assume this way. If no one uh, is raising a doubt, I will assume that it is clear to everyone. Because I am uh, repeatedly asking. If you have doubts, you unmute yourself and talk to me. I cannot uh, 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 skip this presentation. Go to the chat window I, uh, and see. Rather, you unmute yourself and talk to me. So since no one talking, I assume that it is clear to everyone. So now let us proceed to other one. This means that CPU will check the flag. Is 10,000 times between each transfer. So I complete this one by saying that what is required to check the flag, it has to execute two instructions. Okay. So the time taken is one microsecond to just to check the flag, whether the flag is set or not. Once this flag is set to one, it transfers that the data register having eight bits, nothing but one byte. This one byte to transfer the time taken is 10,000 microseconds. Meaning, the CPU, after this 10,000 seconds, again, it has to come and check the flag. Meaning, 10,000 times uh, time units. This uh, in, in, in parentheses, I kept the time units may be nanoseconds, microseconds, or seconds. That's why 10,000 times between each transfer, for every transfer, 10,000 times this flag checking needs to be done. Is that clear? Is that clear to guys? Uh, you please respond. Yes, sir. It's clear. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. So the CPU, what it is doing then? It is simply wasting time while checking the flag instead of doing some other useful processing task. That is the conclusion. This programmed I/O is utter flop. That's why we say it is inefficient. Why it is enough uh, inefficient? Why it is utter flop? This is the reason. The doctor flop reason is this: that to check the flag, it has to execute two instructions. This execution of two instruction itself is actually taking one microsecond, and to transfer one byte, it is actually taking ten thousand microseconds of time. Meaning, to go and check again the flag whether another byte is ready or not, this ten thousand times it has to wait. This time units it has to wait, and then that flag it can check otherwise it cannot check because this this much time is anyway it is taking just to transfer one byte from that uh, interface data register to the cpu memory till that time it has to wait so that's why the cpu is wasting that time while checking the flag instead of doing some other useful processing tasks that's why this is inefficient remember this is important examination point of view that's why we go for interrupt enabled so I am not going to take up this for discussion. I wrap by uh, just just in uh, 30 seconds introducing 30 seconds only, not one minute, 30 seconds. That 30 seconds is instead CPU checking all the time that uh, flag is ready or not. Yeah, I would device will come and knock the door of the CPU. Oh, Baba, I am ready now. 
till that time cpu will be keep doing some other job that is 30 seconds over so how that uh, io device is coming and knocking the cpu door oh baba i am ready and cpu meanwhile doing its own happiest job so let us see in next session uh, hopefully so if you have any queries i encourage you you stay here and you ask otherwise uh, you can leave because already people are uh, 28 I, uh, at the time uh, no no uh, 29 messages 36 people but at the time when i started people were some 45 uh, so it means what people they left the 